The Florida Department of Transportation, or FDOT, welcomes you to the Alternatives Public Information Meeting for the State Road 535 Project Development and Environment, or PD&D, study, located in Orange and Osceola Counties, Florida. The financial project ID number is 437-174-2. The Environmental Review, Consultation, and Other Actions Required by Applicable Federal Environmental Laws for this project are being, or have been, carried out by the Florida Department of Transportation, FDOT, pursuant to 23 U.S.C. Section 327 and a Memorandum of Understanding dated May 26, 2022, and executed by the Federal Highway Administration, and FDOT. The Florida Department of Transportation has complied with various non-discrimination laws and regulations. This public meeting was advertised and is being conducted in accordance with state and federal requirements, including Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and related amendments. Public participation is solicited without regard to race, color, national origin, age, sex, religion, disability, or family status. Persons wishing to express their concerns about Title VI may do so by contacting Jennifer Smith, District 5 Title VI Coordinator by mail at 719 South Woodland Boulevard, Deland, Florida, 32720 by phone at 386-943-5367 or email at j-e-n-n-i-f-e-r dot s-m-i-t-h number two at d-o-t dot s-t-a-t-e dot f-l dot u-s. You may also contact Jacqueline Paramore, State Title VI Coordinator, by mail at 605 Sewanee Street, mail station 65, Tallahassee, Florida, 32399-0450, by phone at 850-414-4753, or email at jacquelinne dot p-a-r-a-m-o-r-e at dot s-t-a-t-e dot f-l dot u-s. This information is shown on a sign at the in-person location on the project website and in the meeting notifications. This public meeting was advertised in the Florida Administrative Register or FDOT's Public Notices website in local newspapers in English in the Orlando Sentinel and in Spanish in El Sentinel and on the project webpage. In addition, adjacent property owners, interested individuals, elected and appointed officials, and government agencies were also notified about this public meeting and bilingual newsletters were hand-delivered to various businesses along the corridor. The State Road 535 Corridor Planning Study was completed in November 2017. The Corridor Planning Study identified potential short-term and long-term improvements and recommendations for the next phase in project development, which is the Project Development and Environment, or PD&D, study. The PD&D study is ongoing and is in the second phase of the project development process. A PD&D study is a blending of engineering evaluations, environmental assessments, public engagement, and agency coordination. The process complies with the National Environmental Policy Act requirements and is used to determine the range of potential solutions known as alternatives to be evaluated and the potential impacts and enhancements associated with these alternatives. Subsequent phases include final design and engineering, right-of-way acquisition, construction, and maintenance. Final design and engineering is funded in fiscal year 2026. 
The State Road 535 PD&D study is located within Orange and Osceola counties. State Road 535 provides an important link for major roadways such as US 192, State Road 417, and Interstate 4, and serves a high volume of traffic. The corridor also provides access to major activity centers such as Lake Buena Vista factory stores, multiple hotels, residential communities, and Walt Disney World via State Road 536. The limits of this study encompass approximately two and a half miles from US 192 on the south to just north of World Center Drive or State Road 536. Next, we will talk about the existing characteristics of the study area. Within the limits of the study, State Road 535 generally has two existing travel lanes in each direction separated by a grass median. The existing right-of-way varies from 190 feet to 224 feet in width. The existing posted speed limit varies from 45 miles per hour to 50 miles per hour. The State Road 535 PD&D study is evaluating alternatives that include widening of State Road 535 to six lanes as well as improvements to intersections and bicycle and pedestrian facilities. Currently, Several segments and intersections along State Road 535 are highly congested. This congestion is causing extended delays for motorists that drive the corridor. Turn lane queues at the multiple intersections back up, often to the adjacent intersections. Based on projected population and employment growth, as well as the anticipated future developments adjacent to the study area, the future traffic volumes along State Road 535 are expected to increase by more than 30 percent by the year 2045. Without any corridor improvements, the volumes and delays for motorists are anticipated to increase. Additionally, all segments along State Road 535 within the project limits currently exceed the statewide average crash rate and nine intersections are included on FDOT's high crash list. This graphic or heat map represents the concentration of crashes recorded within the study area in the five-year span from 2014 to 2018. The crash history along the corridor emphasizes the need for this project. There are currently gaps in the sidewalks and bicycle facilities along State Road 535. Numerous pedestrian and bicycle crashes have occurred along the study corridor within a five-year period. Safety and traffic conditions are anticipated to worsen if no improvements are implemented along State Road 535. This project is needed to improve traffic operations and mobility, reduce congestion, and enhance safety for all modes of travel, including bicyclists and pedestrians. The purpose of this study is to develop and evaluate alternatives that will accommodate the existing and future travel demand, improve safety, and enhance the pedestrian environment. A no-build alternative and three build alternatives are being considered. The no build alternative assumes that no improvements would be made to State Road 535 within the limits of this project. The no build alternative results in degraded future traffic operations and increased congestion. Additionally, the current bicycle and pedestrian facilities would not be improved. The no-build alternative does not meet the project purpose and need. All build alternative options include three travel lanes in each direction, separated by a grass median. Pedestrian and bicycle facilities would be fully connected. The three alternatives include the following. Alternative 1 consists of inside widening of State Road 535 to a six-lane roadway. 
It features a 14-foot shared-use path on the west side and a 9-foot sidewalk on the east side. Alternative 2 consists of widening State Road 535 towards the outside. Similar to Alternative 1, this alternative provides six travel lanes, a 14-foot shared-use path on the west side and a 9-foot sidewalk on the east side. Similar to Alternative 2, Alternative 3 consists of widening State Road 535 towards the outside to a six-lane roadway. This alternative features seven-foot separated bike lanes and nine-foot sidewalks on both sides of the roadway. In addition to widening the roadway to six lanes, intersection improvements are being considered. These intersection improvements include traditional signalized intersections and several innovative intersection types. Innovative intersection types are designed to reduce the number of signalization movements within the primary intersection and provide operational and safety benefits. The innovative intersection types that are being considered for this project include displaced left turns, quadrant roads, median U-turns, and loop roads. Information regarding the various intersection concepts that are being considered will be discussed on the next slides. At several locations, multiple intersection options are being considered. We will now discuss the options at the intersection of State Road 535 at World Center Drive. There are two options being considered at the World Center Drive, also known as State Road 536 intersection. Option A is a displaced left turn intersection for the northbound and southbound left turns. Option B is a quadrant road intersection. We will now discuss the displaced left turn option. This is an example of the operations of a displaced left intersection. A displaced left intersection moves left turning traffic across the opposing through lanes ahead of the primary intersection. Then, left turns are made at the same time as the through movements. Option B is a quadrant road intersection. This is an example of the operations of a quadrant road intersection. The quadrant road intersection removes the left turn movement from the primary intersection. Vehicles that need to turn left on the main road drive through the primary intersection and turn left at the quadrant road. Vehicles then follow the quadrant road back to the main road where they turn right to continue towards their destination. Both options improve the intersection operations compared to no-build and traditional signalized intersections. Option A can be accommodated within the existing right-of-way and results in minimal impacts to environmental resources. Option B requires additional right-of-way and impacts 2 acres of wetlands and 23 acres of floodplains. The estimated construction and right-of-way costs for Option B are higher than for Option A. Option B provides additional operational improvements for the intersection when compared to Option A. The next intersection is State Road 535 at International Drive. The intersection types being considered at International Drive are the same as those at World Center Drive and include Option A, a displaced left turn for the eastbound and westbound left turns, and Option B, a quadrant road on the southwest quadrant of the intersection. Both options improve the intersection operations compared to no-build and traditional signalized intersections. Option A can be accommodated with minor right-of-way and environmental impacts. Option B requires additional right-of-way and impacts 13 acres of wetlands and 17 acres of floodplains.
The estimated construction and right-of-way costs for Option B are higher than for Option A. Option B provides additional operational improvements for the intersection when compared to Option A. The next intersection is State Road 535 at Polynesian Isle Boulevard. There are two options being considered at the Polynesian Isle Boulevard intersection. Option A is a median U-turn for the northbound and southbound left turns, and Option B is a quadrant road. This is an example of the operations of a median U-turn intersection. A median U-turn intersection type removes the left turn movements from the primary intersection and reroutes them to a signalized U-turn intersection just past the primary intersection. Vehicles then make a U-turn back towards the primary intersection and turn right to continue to their destination. Both options improve the intersection operations compared to no-build and traditional signalized intersections. Option A can be accommodated within the existing right-of-way and results in minimal environmental impacts. Option B requires two acres of additional right-of-way and results in minimal environmental impacts. The estimated construction and right-of-way costs for Option B are higher than for Option A. Option B provides additional operational improvements when compared to Option A. The next intersection is State Road 535 at Point Siena Boulevard. There are two options being considered at the Point Siena Boulevard intersection. Option A provides a triple left traffic signal with three eastbound left turn lanes. Option B provides a loop road. This is an example of the operations of a loop road intersection. The loop road intersection removes left turn movements from the primary intersection. Vehicles that need to turn left on the main road drive through the primary intersection and turn right onto the loop road. Vehicles then follow the loop road back to the main road where they turn right to continue towards their destination. Both options improve the intersection operations compared to the no-build alternative. Option A can be accommodated within the existing right-of-way and results in minimal environmental impacts. Option B requires additional right-of-way and impacts three acres of wetlands. The estimated construction and right-of-way costs for Option B are higher than for Option A. Option B provides additional operational improvements for the intersection when compared to Option A. The PD&D study is evaluating the potential impacts and benefits to the natural, social and economic, cultural and physical environments associated with each alternative. Avoidance or minimization of impacts to these features is a key consideration. In addition to these elements, a preliminary drainage analysis including alternative pond sites will also be conducted. The no-build and build alternatives were evaluated and a summary of the potential benefits and impacts are summarized on this slide. The no-build alternative assumes that no improvements would be made and no direct impacts are anticipated. However, the no-build option does not address the existing or future needs of the corridor. All build alternatives under consideration are anticipated to accommodate future traffic demand, improve safety, and enhance bicycle and pedestrian connectivity. Although some right-of-way acquisition may be required, no significant impacts are anticipated to the social, cultural, natural, and physical environments with any of the build alternatives. 
The PD&D study began in 2020 and it is expected to be completed in 2023. Following the alternatives evaluation, the recommended alternative will be presented at a public hearing prior to completion of the PD&D study. The design phase is currently funded for fiscal year 2026. Right-of-way acquisition and construction efforts are unfunded at this time. We encourage your input and feedback about this project. All public comments and questions are part of the public meeting record and every method for providing public comments and questions carries equal weight. While comments and questions will be accepted at any time, those submitted by August 25, 2022, 14 days after the public meeting, will become part of the project's public meeting record. All questions will be responded to in writing following the meeting. For those in attendance at the in-person location, you may complete a printed comment form and return to project staff. If you are participating online, you may submit written questions or comments in the questions box on the GoToWebinar control panel. Responses will be provided via email after the meeting. You may also submit written comments. While visiting the project website at www.cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 437174-2 or by emailing your comments and questions to David Graber, PE, the project manager at david.graber at dot dot state dot fl dot us. You may also mail written comments and questions to David at FDOT 719 South Woodland Boulevard, MS 501, Deland, Florida 32720 or call him at 386-943-5392 during normal business hours. The contact information is also available on the meeting notices, newsletter, and comment form. On behalf of the Florida Department of Transportation, thank you for attending this public meeting and providing your input on this project. All public comments and questions are part of the public record. If you have comments or questions after the meeting, please submit them by August 25, 2022. All questions will be responded to in writing following the meeting. Contact information, the presentation, project documents, and other exhibits displayed at the public meeting will be posted on the public website at www.cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 437174-2. Thank you for participating and have a good evening.